Hi, Ben Jensen here to record this week's High Tech Friday. This week we take a look at Windows Movie Maker. Normally I would go with a cloud-based solution like WeVideo, but in this case Movie Maker actually offers some functionality that we would have to pay a premium account for in WeVideo, so I'll go ahead and show us how to use uh, Movie Maker today. So if you decide to do this for a classroom assignment to replace maybe a traditional research paper or an essay, um, these are the steps that I would recommend going through. Uh, first have your students brainstorm and narrow a topic. Um, the teacher should approve that before they begin work. Um, second, and this is where the research will happen, is have the students write a script or a storyboard. The same kind and amount of research can happen in that step. Um, after the teacher approves that, then you can go ahead and allow students to film, probably using somebody's smartphone, so make sure that, that at least one student in the group has a smartphone, and you can have students do this in groups of two or three or of your choice. In addition to filming um, footage, which you might um, teach students how to d shoot from different angles um, to make the film more interesting. In addition to that, you can have them gather and take pictures um, so they can make a Ken Burns style a documentary if you want, to, even just with all still photos. Photos, it's a nice effect. Um, students can rip YouTube clips um, using a site like clipconverter.cc and then insert those little uh, YouTube clips within their video. Um, and then students can find copyright friendly music on sites such as Jamendo and then they can download and use those mp3s. Um, this fourth step is a really important one. Um, each team should have a captain. The captain really needs to make a folder on his desktop or on a thumb drive and inside of that folder the captain needs to place all of the movies they shoot, all of the pictures they take, all of the YouTube clips that they rip, all of the copyright friendly music that they use. Put it in that folder, don't move that folder, don't move those files, and don't use any files outside of that folder. If they do, they risk um, that movie being corrupted uh, with missing movie files and image files and so that's that's hard for students to understand um, but very important otherwise I've worked with a lot of students that are very frustrated that they have to redo their movie because the video that they browsed for on their um, phone they forgot to move into that folder and then their phone is unplugged from the computer and it no longer can find that uh, footage so just important have students make that folder put all of those files in that folder before they begin work all right um, one thing that's uh, important for students to understand is it, as they work on the raw video it's going to save that as a WLMP file that stands for Windows Live Movie Project that's just the raw working video that that they use in Windows Live Movie Maker um, they don't turn that file into you to grade if they do you're not going to see any of the footage or pictures because it, it's not included within that file so that's important students know not to turn that into you. Um, once they've got their uh, um, clips into Movie Maker, they should edit those clips. They can crop them, they can rotate them, they can change the speed. I'll show you all that in a minute. Then they can add title slides and captions. They can add transitions um, to add interest. They can add narration and music. There are timelines for both of those now, which is a nice improvement in Movie Maker. Finally, once students are all finished, they're going to do save as for computer, and that's going to make an MP4 or a WMV, and that's the finished file that the students turn into you. You can think of that almost as like making a PDF um, that you can open on any computer, and it's going to always look the same, and, and that's what that last step does when they save it for a computer. It's going to make that MP4, which is a finished movie with the rendered video included, so you don't have to worry about having missing footage or, or images. Okay, let's get started with Movie Maker. Students will just click on their start button. Um, Movie Maker may show up in their start menu. If not, they can just type in Movie and it will show up. And here's Movie Maker. It's actually a, a pretty good program nowadays. Um, I didn't used to recommend it, but now there are multiple timelines for audio. Um, and it has some nice functionality that you can't get with some of the other free tools that are out there. First, you want to begin by adding um, video. And again, I'd recommend just uh, going to your desktop where the captains made that folder and just have um, the students pull in all of the clips and images and things that they want to add, including um, still pictures if they want to do a Ken Burns kind of a documentary. All right, now I want to just show you when I save this, when I come up here and click on this floppy disk, it's going to save it as a WLMP. And uh, that's just the raw video that uh, students edit. 
okay they don't turn that video into you and that's important for them to understand if they do you're not going to see anything okay um, first thing you might want to do if the film was shot on a cell phone is rotate those clips so that they're pointed in the right direction and it may take a minute before um, Windows can allow you to do that because when it brings in the video it has to process it for just a minute um, especially longer clips but I was able to rotate these fairly quickly in addition to rotating the clips um, you can double click on them and if you have some mistakes within like maybe at the end you forgot to stop recording you can move the playhead to the end double double click on that clip move the playhead to the end and then you can simply split that clip and then that allows you to delete um, that uh, that clip off of the end of the video so that it's not included in the finished movie um, you could also trim a clip if you wanted to um, take a little bit off of the the beginning and the end um, you could go ahead and trim the clip so whatever's most efficient all right um, now um, I want to show you how to change the speed so if you've got something that you want to show in slow motion you can double click on it and change the speed maybe to half speed and that's going to play that in slow motion so if you wanted to analyze like a golf swing or something that might be an interesting way to to do that if you've got a clip that's long and boring and tedious to watch then students can speed that clip up maybe four times and then that's just gonna make that video all happen much faster so that it's not so lengthy and not not so boring okay all right um, in addition to well so those are the major things I guess that I'd recommend is rotating um, cropping and then changing the speed if you want to although there are all sorts of um, themes and things that you can choose if you just want to make an auto movie um, so I don't have time to show you all the functionality but um, please do check it out. Adding still pictures is the same way. You would just browse to this folder, uh, find a still picture, and add that. Um, what you wouldn't want to do is add a picture outside of that folder because, again, if this gets moved and that image doesn't get moved with it because it's outside of the folder, that's going to show up then as a missing um, image. So just make sure kids are putting all those files into that folder. All right, next thing might be to add some um, title slides. And so I'll just do my movie. And the, du the default duration for the um, title slides is usually uh, seven seconds, um, so you, which is a long time. So you might show students how to change that to something more like three seconds. Uh, the text also defaults to three seconds, so you may show students how to change the duration. If it's not in the right spot, students just drag and drop it. So that's really easy to do. Uh, the fonts and colors and things, um, really easy to change those just up here in the formatting ribbon. Uh, font size, font, uh, color, background, all that sort of thing. Um, you can manually change the start time and the duration of any of these uh, clips. So if you're having trouble with the drag and drop, uh, feel free just to do it manually up here, although um, drag and drop usually seems to work um, pretty well. In addition to title slides, you might add captions. So you would just move the playhead to wherever you want the caption to go, and then you would just type in that caption. The caption is just over the top of video or an image. And, um, Again, you can change the uh, length of that if it's too long just by double clicking on it. You can also change the way that uh, these text elements come on your screen. So there's some interesting things there that you might have students check out depending on what sort of movie they're trying to, the effect they're trying to create, they can choose some nice options here. After they've done um, titles and captions, they might want to go to animations, and there's some really nice animations here that students can uh, choose from, depending on what type of look they're going for. Uh, all sorts of really nice ones. So have students check those out. They can change the duration of those. If they're too long, they can apply them to all the clips so that they don't have to go through and do it one at a time. So have students check that out. Now if they're making more of a Ken Burns documentary the pan and zoom transitions are here and that what that's what Ken Burns uses to make his um, documentary so interesting they might uh, pan out on a uh, large battlefield in the Civil War and then zoom in 
on a specific image within that. So um, feel free to have students use these pan and zooms, particularly if they're using still pictures to add interest to that movie. And again, those can be applied to all of the images or um, films at once. Next, uh, you would probably add uh, narration. So you could put your playhead wherever you want the narration to start. Hit record narration, preferably put on a headset with a microphone and then have students uh, narrate that video and they'll be able to see what's going on as they're talking so they can synchronize it with the video which is kind of a nice uh, touch also and then I'll hit stop here. It's going to make a uh, audio file, save it in that same folder and hit save. Now if it's not loud enough and the film is overtaking the volume you can have students double click on that and go, go to the narration volume and bump that all the way up to the very end. Um, there's not as much precise control over volume level in uh, Movie Maker as there is say on Wii Video, so that's one of the downsides. Um, but you can do a little bit of controlling here, it's just you can't do it throughout the clip like you could in Wii Video. All right. Um, if you uh, want to change where it starts and stops, you can do that here. Uh, and you should also be able to manually uh, drag that into position as well. So I would try to use the drag and drop first, but if you need to come up here and tweak the uh, start and end points, you can do that. Adding music, go back to the home ribbon, add music. You can use one of these. Um, sites that is provided but sometimes they aren't uh, as reliable as just finding your own so Jamendo is a site that I like to use to get um, copyright friendly music and you can look through the different genres um, sometimes I'll just pick a radio station and pick uh, the sort of uh, music that I'm wanting to include in this case ja jazz and then I, once I find a song I like, I can just download that um, MP3. And with Jamendo, you don't have to worry about viruses and malware like you do with some of the other supposed free uh, music sites. And uh, I'm not sure if, if I save that into the correct folder, but let's see where it put it. Again, you would want to encourage students to save into that, um, that folder. And in this case I did, but if it was outside of that folder, you'd want the students to move it into that f movie folder before they add it. So then I can just come back here to uh, my movie and uh, add the music. Put, put the playhead always where you want the music or narration to be inserted. Then I can just go to um, add music and I can then just browse for for that um, music and it'll put it on here and again I can double click on it and change the start and stop time if I'd like to. If this is too loud I can bring that volume down a bit so that it's not so loud. Alright, last step once students are um, satisfied with their movie is to come here to the save movie. Notice I'm going to choose for computer and you can see here it makes the mp4 which I'd go ahead and put right inside of that um, folder that the students have been using all along. This is basically making, if you want to think of it as a PDF of this movie, in other words that mp4 is going to open reliably um, no matter what type of computer you're using. Um, it's going to upload to YouTube just fine. If they try to submit that WLMP to you, it's, it's pretty much useless. If they try to upload that to YouTube, it's not going to work. And then I can just go ahead and play or um, open that folder uh, and turn it into my teacher through the Google Classroom or um, however they want to accept it. So um, if you haven't used, if you haven't taken a look at Windows Movie Maker in a while, it's worth another look. Uh, there's some nice functionality here that you would have to pay for um, if you're using a, a cloud-based tool. So I think for that reason, definitely worth another look. Um, especially since they've added those multiple timelines for narration and music and the audio that's included within the footage that students shoot. 
um, those things didn't used to be available. Plus you've got the ability to rotate your videos, change the speed, and so those are some really nice features that you won't f always find in the free version of the cloud-based tools. Thanks for watching this week's High Tech Friday.